From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Ed Renser, Johnny, Union States Casualty Company. Oh, hi, Ed. I heard you were trying to reach me. Yes, indeed. A plane leaves in two hours. For where? Ensenada. It's a port on the west coast of Mexico, south... Yeah, of... I know, Ed. I know. I've been there. Well, but what Charlie are you... Burton is down there, Johnny. You know the big nightclub TV comment. You know good old lovable boyish Charlie? I've seen his show. Who hasn't? Really keeps you screaming, doesn't he? Oh, he is a killer. Eesh. So what do I do? Go out there and scream it up for him? You go out there and keep him alive. Someone's threatened to murder him. One of his audience, maybe? <laughs> no, wait, Johnny. This is no laughing matter. Anything happens to Charlie Burton, I cut my throat. Hey, you really do like his show. We're carrying a half million dollars worth of insurance on that boy. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office, Union States Casualty Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the laughing matter. Item one, $221.50. Transportation by scheduled airline to San Diego, Ensenadas there, and charter plane for a flight 80 miles south into Mexico to Ensenada. Item two, a dollar ninety. Taxi from the plowed ground airstrip to the Carrara Marble Foyer of the Flush Balboa Beach Hotel. The contrast was typical. Ensenada is two towns, really. The tourist town is a glittering belt of pseudo swank resorts around the south end of the bay. Bald headed men in flowery sports shirts and fat women in shorts, loaded down with cameras, souvenirs, and U.S. dollars. The loafing town. And next to it, the rows of warehouses and docks, the fishing fleets and freezer plants, narrow dirt streets and slums. Soft-eyed Mexicans and the gentle, liquid sound of Spanish. Native town, the working town. Two different ways of life, and no bridge of understanding between. The executive producer of the Charlie Burton Show, a man named Frank Maltz, was in my room five minutes after I checked in. Glad to know you, Mr. Dollar. He was probably in his middle 40s, but looked older, haggard, pressured. A little battered around the edges. He might not have his ulcer yet, but he was sure working on one. Didn't waste much time getting here. Well, that phone call of yours got them pretty upset back there in Hartford. I meant for it, So too. I get it. Have you called in the local authorities, Mr. Maltz? No. Why not? No, it wouldn't have done any good. Charlie would have blown his top and had him thrown out. Good old lovable Charlie? Yes. He doesn't know you phoned Hartford. No, he'd have stopped me if he'd known. Why? Does he want to die? Oh, he says he's had murder threats before, crank letters. He wouldn't take it serious. But you do, is that it? I didn't figure. It was up to me to decide. As I understand it, Mr. Maltz, there was a note of some kind slipped under Burton's door. That's right. Well, tell me about it, will you? All right. Yesterday evening, after we came back from shooting some scenes around the bay, we went to our room, shower, clean up for dinner. Uh-huh. When Charlie started to leave his room, he saw the note. Where is his room? Fourth one down on the terrace to the left. All our rooms open onto this same terrace. Do you still have that note? No, no. Charlie tore it up after he read it. Did he show it to anybody? Yes, to me. It was on stationery from the hotel here. It was in pencil and crudely printed. Remember the wording? Oh, yes. It said, only the gods are immortal, Burton. As you'll soon find out, you'll never leave Ensenada alive. Hmm. Kind of an odd way of putting it. I thought so myself. Know anyone who might use that style of phrasing? No, I'm afraid not. All right. What else, Mr. Maltz? Nothing else. Those are the facts. Anything happened since the note? Not as far as I know. Burton could be right, of course. The whole thing may be a hoax. Yeah, maybe. But that's for you to decide, not me. Who do you know who might think they had a reason to kill him? Ah, uh-huh. I think I'll let you form your own conclusions on that. Oh, thanks, Mr. Maltz. That's very thoughtful of you. All me. right, I'm sorry. I realize I haven't given you much to go on. Practically nothing. I can't help it, Dollar. That's all I know about it. I see. Well, talk to the others. See what they know what about it. others? Well, I was thinking mainly of Gloria Dale and Al Schreiber. And there's Charlie himself, of course. Suppose you brief me on those other two. All right. Gloria Dale's the feminine lead. Oh, yeah, I've seen her on TV. Yeah, probably. She's been with the show for three years. She's in her late 20s. She's single. She's gorgeous. 
She has a terrific sense of comedy. How does she get along with old, lovable Charlie? Good question. Maybe she can give you an answer to it. All right, I'll ask her. And who was that other one you mentioned? Al Schreiber? Yeah, he's a young newcomer. He's been with the show six months now. A real talent, if he were ever given a chance to show it. Why isn't he given a chance? Oh, because on the Charlie Burton show, my friend, there is one and only one star, namely... Good old, lovable, boyish Charlie oh, Burton. Oh, you've been reading the press release. Well, as a matter of fact, I have. All right, who else? No, that's all. At least all that matter. The camera crew, the technicians who were sent up from Churubusco in Mexico City, they never heard of Charlie Burton before. And we haven't had much of any contact with anyone here in town. Now, I think that note was written by somebody right here in the family. That's another reason I sent for you instead of the local police. Just why did you send for me, Mr. Maltz? What do you mean? How do you feel about Charlie Burton? Haven't you guessed? More or less, I think. Well, I'll spell it right out for you, Mr. Dollar. I hate his guts. And what do you care whether he's murdered or not? Yeah, I'd get roaring drunk to celebrate it. And yet you're the one who phoned an SOS to Hartford. Well, sure. If Burton does get it, I want an expert around. Somebody will tag the right party for the crime. A matter of justice, is that it? Why not? Oh, because it's usually just a word people talk about. What they really want is to win. Ah. Uh, is that what you want, Mr. Moltz? <laughs> Very funny. You ought to go on television. No, I'm waiting till they perfect it. I feel the same way about murder. So the legend of lovable Charlie was starting to crack. One person at least didn't love him, Frank Maltz, his executive producer. And there was something else besides hate in Frank Maltz's eyes, a weariness or bitterness, something I couldn't quite place. I filed the thought for the moment, took time to shower and change, and went looking for another pair of eyes, a prettier pair. And I found them, alone on the terrace with their owner. They were turned toward the west, toward the last golden edge of the sun as it sank into the Pacific. They were big and blue. And very lovely. Hello there. How are you, Miss Dale? Miss... I'm Johnny Dollar. I just got in from Hartford, and I've been talking with Frank Maltz. Oh, you must be with the advertising sponsor. No, I'm an insurance investigator. Huh? Yes, I'm here in regard to that threatening note that Mr. Burton received. Oh, that. You've heard about it, then? Oh, we all heard about it. Interminably. <laughs> From Burton, you mean? Who else? Oh, he paced and posed and beat his breast. He wept and stormed and shouted at us. Harangued, accused, and monologued us. <laughs> Our base ingratitude after all he'd done for us. Done to us, he should have said. That one of us, a viper in his bosom, should stoop to such a practical joke on good old luck. If it was a practical joke, what are you doing down here? Do you think it was a joke, Miss Dale? I don't, but Charlie himself said... Do you mean somebody really meant that threat? Maybe. Well, what do you know? Any ideas to who might have written it? Sure. Anybody who knows him. Is he that bad, actually? Mr. Dollar, you've heard the expression, horrid old man. Yeah. Well, if Charlie Burton worked for years to improve himself, I mean, really tried, eventually he might lift himself up high enough to be a horrid old man. <laughs> Well, if it's like that, why do you stick around? Why do I? Because I signed a contract last year during an emotional crisis. And it's got two more years to run. Break it. Breathe a little clean air for a change. Yeah, I'd be dead professionally, and that's about all I've got in life now. Professional career, such as it is. Same thing apply to Frank Maltz? Yep, contract. Executive producer is just a title. The Charlie Burton show is owned by Charlie Burton, locked stock, barrel, and the souls of the employees. Something of a dictator, huh? Egomaniac. He's a pre-adolescent paranoid with the ethics of a rattlesnake and the jealous instincts of a Turkish harem master. Uh -huh. oh, forgive me, Mr. Dollar. I had that line in a play once, but it still fits him. Tell me the truth, Miss Dale. Did you write that note? I'm a female comic, Mr. Dollar. So? So who can write? Gloria. Out here, Al, on the terrace. Al Schreiber, have you met him yet? No, but I've got him on the list. That may turn out to be quite a list before you're through. Downstairs bar at seven, honey. That's what you said. Downstairs bar at seven. Yeah, I know. I'm going in and change right now. Al, this is Johnny Dollar, Al Schreiber. Oh, Al. Hi, glad to see you. Mr. Dollar's an insurance investigator. He's here about that murder threat Charlie got. You mean that note was for real? Could be. Well, happy days. Baby, there's hope for us yet. Careful, Al. Mr. Dollar's making a list. Sweetie, I'd be proud to confess. Only I didn't think of the idea, and besides, I'm a coward. Did either of you actually see that note? No, but we heard about it. So I understand. 
how does insurance figure in this? You mean some company actually wrote a policy on that earthworm? To the tune of a half million bucks. Holy Hannah, who's he worth that much to? His sponsor, the advertising client. I doubt if it's personal, really. They're just protecting their investment in the show. A half million fish. For a phony old fake who weighs in at a fast 30 cents. Say, maybe they're out to kill him and make a profit for themselves. <laughs> I'll put them on the list. And I take it you're in the club, too, Al. The club? At least you're not wearing a love Charlie Burton button. Oh, sir. All I am, ever was, or hope to be in any future life. All I have, ever had, or expect to have at any time notwithstanding. The foregoing to supersede any previous statement, and irregardless of any utterance made hereafter, I owe in its entirety, and without any reservation whatsoever, to my one and only benefactor, that sterling, magnanimous, warm-hearted, genial... I'll bet you think I'm only saying that because it's in my contract. <laughs> Did you write the note, Al? I don't know what to say until I check with my writers. Yeah, I have the same problem with my underwriters. Say, that's not bad, Mr. Dollar. You know, you ought to Sorry. try television. I'm waiting till they perfect it. <laughs> Item three, 80 cents, one drink. I had it sent from the bar and sat on the terrace alone and drank it. I watched the sun die in the west and let the soft night creep out of the hills of Mexico and sink down over me in gentle folds. Then I saw a man slip from the shadowed shrubbery and move cautiously up the terrace, a pale ghost dressed in the white cotton of a pan worker. As I came quietly to my feet, a girl ran from inside somewhere, clung to him and stopped him. They argued fiercely for a moment and guarded Spanish. Then the man turned and saw me and vanished into the darkness of the hotel gardens. The girl faced me for an instant with eyes like frightened doves. Then she, too, turned and fled. But I'd recognize her. She was the hotel maid who'd brought ice to my room when I first arrived. So it was a lover's meeting, most likely. And yet the man, before she stopped him, had been heading across the terrace toward Charlie Burton's room. Here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, the great man condescends and shivers a little, too. And a girl's hidden hate is blacker than the sea-wet rock she vents it on. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood, written by Les Crutchfield. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Charlie Burton, Mr. Dollar. Oh, yes. Was hoping you'd come out of seclusion. Seclusion? 
I arrived in Ensenada at 4 o'clock this afternoon. It's now 10 p.m., and I still haven't been able to see the man I'm supposed to protect. I did not invite you here, Mr. Dollar. I do not need any protection. Well, my insurance company doesn't agree with you, and they've got a half million dollars riding on your life. Look, my life has not been threatened. That note was a mere bit of buffoonery perpetrated by one of those nearest and dearest to me. One of those to whom I have unstintingly devoted my oh, entire... Oh, knock it off, Burton. I know the good old lovable Charlie legend, and I've seen your TV show. Well, naturally. Look, are you going to talk to me, or do I wire my company to cancel your policy and notify your sponsor that you've refused to cooperate with us? <clears throat> Mr. Dollar, you may come down to my room in ten minutes. I'll be there in an hour, Burton. You wait on me for a change. <laughs> From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location in Sonata, Mexico, to the Home Office, Union States Casualty Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the laughing matter. Expense account continued. Item five, a dollar and forty cents. Taxi from the hotel in the village to the Commandancia Police on Frente Avenue. I wanted to run down to one of the maids at the hotel, a girl named Valena Morales. I'd seen her on the hotel terrace shortly after dark near Charlie Burton's room. Seen her arguing with some man who'd managed to slip away from me in the darkness. Captain Peral said he'd check with me later and politely avoided asking what it was all about. If he had, I couldn't have told him. The Charlie Burton comedy show was on location at Ensenada, Mexico, and Frank Maltz, the producer, had frantically phoned Hartford and claimed Burton's life had been threatened. Burton thought it was a practical joke. Maltz didn't know. Neither did I. But I was there to find out. Hiya. You are Mr. John Dollar, I assume. You couldn't assume any corrector. Mind if I come in? By all means, do. Thanks. I am Charles Burton, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, I know. I've seen your face in a number of saloons. I beg your pardon? Oh, on their television sets. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Well, sit down, Mr. Dollar. I just did. Yes, so I noticed. Well, I don't imagine you'll be here long enough for me to have something sent up from me. Oh, I'm sure I will. I'll have scotch on the rocks. Double. I see. Room service, please. This is Mr. Burton in Suite D. Please send up one scotch on the rocks. Double. Uh, make it double. Oh, uh, just a moment, please. By the way, Mr. Dollar, what is your room number? I can't seem to remember it at the moment. Why don't you just charge it to yours and then bill me for it later? If you think your room service, cancel that order. Yes, I said cancel it. I will not tolerate this high-handed attitude from a hireling, sir. But not your hireling, Burton. Now, let's get a few things straight right now. From what I've heard about you up to now, I don't like you. And when I get to know you better, you like it or not. And I certainly do not. And there's nothing you can do about it. Oh. Try throwing your weight around with the insurance company and they'll cancel your policy. And if that happens, you'll have sponsor trouble right up to your neck. If you think you... I think you're not going to let it happen, Burton. You can't afford to. So cut out the kidding and let's get on with it. You know, I... I like you, Dollar. (laughs) You're so uninhibited. I'm going to buy you that... Nope. Sorry. Why not? I didn't want it in the first place. It was only a way to get your goat break down that phony guard. But uh, have one yourself, though. Now, drinking is not one of my vices. Oh, so that explains it. Explains what? It wasn't one of Hitler's vices, either. <laughs> You're so delightfully insulting, you know. One can hardly take offense. Too bad. I'd hope for better results. Would you mind telling me just who exactly is responsible for this prejudiced opinion you have of me? Well, as I remember, it was fairly unanimous. As I know, you talked to Frank Maltz. Maltz, of course, is bitter because he hasn't been given complete control of my show. Or any control, the way I hear it. As long as as it's the Charlie Burton show, Mr. Dollar, Charlie Burton intends to run it. Only the gods are immortal. Isn't that what the murder threat said? I'll get to that. Then there's Gloria Dale, my leading lady, dear Gloria... I suppose she told you I've treated her very badly. Practically forced her to sign a contract that pays her several thousand dollars a week. A hideous fate, actually. It could be. And Al Schreiber? Did he mention the fact that I took him out of a a 40-a-week burlesque house and taught him the subtleties of high-class, big-time comedy? Things that I... I had spent a lifetime perfecting. Look, Burton, if you're trying to convince me of your fine, sterling character, forget it. It's irrelevant. I'm here because... You're here because of that note, and that's exactly what I'm getting at. You think it was written by one of those three people, don't you? Right. Well, I agree with you. 
But you also take the threat seriously. I don't. Why not? Because not one of them has any reason to kill me. Yes, I know how they talk. They're underpaid, overworked. The boss is a tyrant. They hate him, the same old patter. And that kind of talk never leads to murder, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, you've got a point there, I guess. That note was pushed under my door yesterday as a crude attempt at a joke. Nothing else. Then Maltz lost his head and had you sent down here from Hartford. And the whole thing has become ridiculous. You may be right. <laughs> well, you sure you won't have that drink? No, no, thanks. Oh, by the way, there's a maid at the hotel here. I believe she works all the rooms along the terrace here. A small girl, very pretty, with her short curly hair. Oh, uh, yes, 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 Valina. Oh, you've noticed her, then? Oh, quite. I find her utterly charming. Would you happen to know whether she's married? I really didn't bother to ask. Does it matter? Not to me, but it might to her husband. <clears throat> you are determined, aren't you? There must be some reason why you're so scared. Scared? You do have a preposterous imagination. Good night, Mr. Dollar. It wasn't my imagination. Burton was scared, all worried, or upset. At any rate, something was bothering him. But at the moment, he was covering up for some reason, and there was nothing more I could do to push him. So I gave up for the time being and went back to my room. But I wasn't ready for sleep, and the terrace outside my windows lying empty in the moonlight seemed inviting. And even more so, the sound of breakers a hundred yards beyond. I followed a winding path through the hotel gardens and came out of the sandy cove. And there I found her. Gloria Dale, sitting on the sea-worn rocks by the water's edge, with a bottle beside her, getting quietly drunk. You've discovered my guilty secret, Mr. Dollar, and I've only got one glass. It's that or the bottle. I'll share the glass with you, if it's all right. Sure. There you are. Thanks. Here's to the moon, people. They seem real close tonight, don't they? Yeah, they'll be dancing out there in the water by midnight. <laughs> I think you're as crazy as I am. <laughs> Crazier. You're not even in the same league. I'm glad you came. I go sort of nuts on moonlit nights by myself. Hey, what happened to Al? Weren't you two together? I sent him off to bed. He gets a little wearing sometimes. He's real gone on you, isn't he? I guess so. And you? He's a good guy. I like him a lot. He's fine, but... But no click, huh? No click. Here's to better better click. Hey, easy, kid. You're drinking it straight, you know. Help yourself. What are you trying to do to yourself, Gloria? Learn to forget. Forget the emptiness. The hollowness. There's nothing in me anymore. Except the hate, of course. There's plenty of hate. For Charlie Burton... For Charlie Burton. Do you hate him enough to kill him? You've always got your eye on the ball, haven't you, Mr. Dollar? More or less. Would you like to tell me about this emptiness? No, I don't think so. All right. Why not, though? It's the edge of the land and the edge of the sea. And you're from the moon and you go back there at dawn. So why not? Here's to the moon. It makes people crazy. Hey, save half of that one for me. Oh, sure. Here you are. Yeah, just leave it there. So? Well, a year ago, my contract was up. And I was leaving the show. And I was about to be married. Jerry, his name was. And he's the only man I ever really loved. Uh-huh. Burton was furious. Said I was letting him down. I was ungrateful. But he couldn't stop me because my contract was up. And one morning, I got a note from Jerry... Special delivery. We were through, it said. Why? No explanation. Just a cold, vicious note. That same morning, Jerry left town with a friend. Chartered a plane and went to Canada on a hunting trip. And you didn't find out the reason for it? Later, yes. At the time, I was hurt. I was terribly hurt. I signed a new contract and went on working. Months later, I got the story around about. What was it? A private detective, one of the crooked ones, had gone to Jerry with a complete report about me, supposedly. My private life, field reports, affidavits, statements, even photographs. A fake, the whole thing. But it convinced Jerry. 
You know who was behind it? I can guess. Sure. Good old, lovable Charlie Burton. He wanted to make sure I'd sign that contract. But when you did find out, why didn't you go to I Jerry? I wish I could have. That hunting trip, the plane, it crashed. Jerry never came back. He was killed. <laughs> That's crazy, huh? Oh, no, easy, sweet. Do I hate Charlie Burton enough to kill him? That's what you asked me, wasn't it? Sure, I hate him enough. A thousand times enough. Only I haven't got the nerve. So what do I do? I drink. Gloria. Oh, Bill. Help me get back there. Please, Johnny. Will you take me home? <laughs> Love and hate, and the black sea rocks, and a lunatic's moon at midnight. And no help on this earth for a wounded heart but time itself. A tide was rising now and rising fast, and hidden by the darkness a wave curled and broke, and time ran out. <laughs> I lunged out of bed and fumbled in the blackness for my robe and slippers and gun. Yeah, who is it? Charlie Burton. Open up. Hurry. Dollar, you better protect me. Somebody took a shot at me through my window from the terrace. Oh, it was probably just a crude, practical joke. Joke? Joke? This is no laughing matter. Don't you understand, Dollar? Somebody's out to kill me. Here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a thickening web, clean and sticky. But one of the flies pulls free by using a gun. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Capitan de Vitro Parral, senor, of the Ensenada Police. Oh, hi, Parral. I tried to call you a few minutes ago. We've had a shooting out here at the hotel. And uh, somebody, she's uh, dead, No, sir. no, nobody's dead. The bullet missed. Somebody fired a shot from the terrace into one of the rooms. I am flush with the red light, senor. I make the siren. I'm uh, calm like the wind. Good. But will you do me one thing before you blow up a storm? Mother, say. There's a man missing from his room here, a friend of the man who was shot at. He must be around town somewhere. Where is he? He's an Americano, about 45. Name's Frank Maltz. Frank Maltz. Bueno, we'll find him. I'm going to make one uh, APCT. B, you mean, APB. C, APB, like on radio in Los Estados. All right, hop to it, Peral. Uh, si, senor. Uh, senor, what it is, this APB? <laughs> From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Ensenada, Mexico, to the Home Office, Union States Casualty Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, The Laughing Matter. Expense account continued. <laughs> Item six, one dollar, a pot of coffee from the hotel kitchen, special. It was 1 a.m. I'd been half asleep when the shot was fired, and I hoped the coffee would help get me at least half awake. I hadn't expected it to happen that way. And neither had good old lovable Charlie Burton, America's favorite TV comic, according to his press agents. Charlie had called it a joke, but he wasn't laughing now, and neither was I. Charlie's life was insured for a half million bucks, payable to his sponsor. Where he is, senor, this uh, man who was get shot? He didn't get shot, Peral. He got shot at. Well, see, it's what I wish to say, but the tongue is no make English too good. Well, you're doing fine. The manager gave Bert another room, inside, away from the terrace here. He's probably got the door locked and the furniture piled in front of it. Monday? I mean he's scared, very scared. Comprende? Oh, si, si. Él tiene mucho miedo. Yeah, I guess so. Now, according to his story, he was asleep here on this side of the bed. Someone fired the shot from outside on the terrace. It broke the window there. And the bullet lodged here in the bed, about six inches above Burton's head where he was lying on the pillow. 
Let's see, you put a velo. And then he is wake up quick. He is, um, he is no see nobody, senor. He is no hear nobody. No, he was too scared to know. He jumped out of bed, ran down the inside corridor, and banged on my door. I searched the terrace right away and didn't find a thing. And uh, these other people, uh, which I work for him to make the television, they are also having room which are close to this? Peral, your tongue may not make the English too good, but there's nothing wrong with your head. Mander's that? I mean, you're okay, amigo. You're a good cop. <laughs> Gracias, senor. Yes, yes, any one of them could have fired that shot. And they are big which ones, these people? Well, there's Frank Maltz. He's the producer of the Charlie Burton show. He's the one who is missing from his room, the one I asked you to locate. I see, I see. Then there's Gloria Dale. She's the feminine star of the show. She's in the third room down. Uh, she is in the room of her when the shoot was fired? Yeah, yeah, she'd gone to bed. I, I had to beat on the door to wake her. She hadn't even heard the shot. She'd been pretty upset. She'd... Well, she'd been drinking earlier. See... It's always the same. These Americanas ladies, which have come to Ensenada, always they are drink too much. Eh, you may be right. Anyway, the third member of the group is Al Schreiber, second room down. He's an actor, too. And where he is when these things happen? In bed, so he says. The shot woke him up, and he came out into the corridor while Burton was banging on my door. And these are all, senor? Yep, that's the bunch. Which one you are think is not like this, Charlie? Every single one of them hates him. Hmm. Then there's another possibility, too. That girl I asked you to check on earlier, the maid who works here at the hotel. You see, La Senora Velina Morales. Pues, we're looking, but we are not find her yet. Oh? Hey, I know está en casa. Uh, she are no at her house, senor. Oh, I see. Uh, ni el marido tampoco es. Uh, uh, also, the, um, how you say, her, her husband is gone. Oh, then she is married. Oh, si, senor. You're still looking for her, aren't you? Pues, si, senor. No tenga cuidado. It's no big town in Senada. We are find her too soon now. I think it... As for me, yo creo. I am tell the manager I was here. La policía acá. Si, Capitán de Vidro Parral. ¿Dónde? Bien, si. Muy bien. Bien, adiós. Uh, this man you are saying have disappeared, senor. Frank Maltz... He yeah, was now be found. Where is he? Uh, it's in Cantina, uh, a nightclub. It's called the Ventiuno. Ventiuno. Where is it? In town somewhere? You see, it is the, um, how you say, senora, it's one big uh, hot spot. <laughs> Item seven, one dollar, taxi into town. Peral stayed at the hotel to talk to Charlie Burton and the others. I thought it might do some good, at least by keeping them off balance. Regardless of his knowledge of English, Peral was a smart lad, and his eyes never missed a thing. The Ventayuna may have been a hot spot earlier, but at this time of night it was almost deserted. There were a few weary B-girls drowsing at the bar, a scant handful of last-ditch patrons, and Frank Maltz, alone at a table, glowing with mellow geniality and bottled health. <laughs> well, now, another night out with insomnia that tastes for dives. Pull up a chair, Johnny. Thanks. Been here long? Forever. Oh? At least for years and years. I am part of the place, my boy. These worm-eaten rafters, the crumbling walls, this musty aroma of ancient tequila that was spilt on these tiles long before you were even born. I see. You see, the place was built by the conquistadores, and I dropped in the very next day. I've been here ever since. Maltz, look, now, John. Now, speak softly, softly, friend. This is hallowed ground. This is the meeting place. This is the crossroads, you see, for two separate worlds. The tourists come traipsing down from Beach Boulevard up there. They call it slumming. And the townsfolk come up from Gastelum and Balboa, and they all meet here. And they drink tequila, and then they dance the fandango. The, hey, amigo, how about playing a fandango? Hmm? <laughs> no, he can't hear, you know, because he is dead. We are all dead here, Johnny. You know something, Maltz? Hmm? You're not nearly as plastic as you're pretending to be. I know that, Johnny. Have you been here all evening? Here in the Ventayuna? <laughs> How do you like that name, Ventayuna? It means a 21, you yeah, know. Yeah, I know, I know. Have you been here in the 21 all evening? Oh, no. I've been in all of them. I just ended up here. 
Ever see a better place to end up, Johnny? Where were you around 12.40 tonight? What? What are you driving at? Somebody took a shot at Charlie Burton tonight. Woo! I got my fingers crossed, did they? No, no, they didn't hit him. Uh, well, maybe they'll have another chance. Not if I can prevent it. Now, that's why you were checking times on me, huh? You think uh, I maybe made a clay pigeon out of that rat. Did you? <laughs> Johnny, I left the hotel at 10 o'clock. I've been a lot of places since, but not back there. I don't know where I was at 1240. Maybe some bartender around town will know. <laughs> I have seen them all tonight, one time or another. This lush stuff seems to be a habit with all of you, including Gloria. Well, stick around Burton a month. You'll know why. So, why do you stick around him? Me, personally? There's a couple of reasons, I guess. I'm trying to help somebody else. For one thing, well, myself at the same time, of course. Meaning? Al Schreiber, the kid is great, Johnny, he really is. And it'll be his show next year, if we can hang on. And for the same sponsor. With you, producer? Well, that's right. They're fed up with Charlie Burton, and they've got reason to be. He's a phony name, Johnny, nothing else. It's a fake, it's a build-up. They've got to spend more on press relations now than it costs to produce the show. Then with Charlie out of it, you and Al would be in. Is that the way it stacks up? <laughs> That's right. You said you had a couple of reasons for staying on. Oh, forget it. The second one is not important. It's it's, <laughs> it's a sob story. Well, it won't be the first one I've heard tonight. I'm married, you see, Johnny. 23 years now. And for the last eight, my wife has been completely paralyzed. Utterly helpless. She's in a sanitarium upstate. She has to have special care. Special treatments, and it costs $350 a week, 52 weeks a year. So I stay on with Burton, and I go on hating him. And whenever the hate gets too bad, I go up and see her. Well, she doesn't know me. She doesn't know anyone. She just lies there and breathes. But I, I, I look at her, and I remember how she was and how I loved her. And I still love her, Johnny. So that's the way it is. I left him there in the cantina with his love and his hate and walked out into the street, empty and silent under the wheeling stars in the soft dark night. A lone dog sidled past, gray and gaunt, intent on some mission of his own and faded into the shadows. And the town slept, its own loves and hates put aside until morning. Quiet town. Then the emptiness was filled with sound, and a flashing red light splashed the darkness. Morale of the Ensenada police. He said the maid from the hotel, Valena Morales, had come home. One of his sergeants was waiting there with her. Buenas noches, senora. Buenas noches. The tiny room was lit by a flickering oil lamp, and a candle burned beneath the crucifix on the wall above the bed. Cement floor and adobe walls, bare and clean, like the cell of a nun in a convent. She was young, pretty, and at the moment, very frightened. She talked, half crying, and Peral translated. Charlie Burton, old, lovable Charlie, had been bothering her, annoying her at the hotel. She tried to avoid him, but had made the mistake of telling her husband. He'd been furious and had come to the hotel earlier in the evening. That's when I'd seen the two of them arguing on the terrace. She hadn't seen him since. So, Senor Dollar, what is it you are think? I think you'd better find a husband and find him quick. <laughs> Here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, death tries once more, and this time doesn't miss. But death, you know, is blind. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Ha
Hollywood. It's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Charlie Burton speaking. Oh, morning, Burton. So you're still alive, huh? If that was an attempt at humor, it was entirely out of place. Well, it's early yet. I'm the comedian, and I'll make the jokes. Your job is to protect my life. Don't tell me you've been shot at again. This time of morning? Boy, whoever it is really must hate you, Burton. Dollar, so help me... So I... help you nothing. You may be good old lovable Charlie to 40 million television viewers, but to me you're just a pain in the neck. I'll remind you, To sir. my clients, you're worth a half million bucks because he was fool enough to write an insurance policy on your life. But not to me. My price on you is a fast three cents. Give or take a couple. My life has been threatened. Sure, and that's why I'm here. But yesterday, when I tried to get you to cooperate, you called it a practical joke. Well, I'm not calling it that now. No, because somebody tossed a bullet at you last night and scared the living pants off of you. Well, call Captain Peral of the Ensenada Police. Uh, Mr. Dollar. Look, I need please. another hour's sleep, so don't phone my room again before 9 o'clock. Goodbye. <laughs> From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location in Sonata, Mexico. To the Home Office, Union States Casualty Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the laughing matter. Expense account continued. Item 10, 50 cents, room service on a glass of orange juice. Another hour's sleep was out of the question. Just hearing his voice on the phone left me too mad to relax. One of America's most popular comedians, a living legend. And yet his whole cast, the people down here with him on location, hated the ground he walked on. Personally, I was on their side. But my job was to protect his life from some unknown enemy who'd sent him a threatening note. And last night, the threat had become action in the form of a shot fired from the darkness. It was my job to see that the killer didn't get a second chance. And that's what I was being paid for. And the fact that Charlie Burton was a Class A stinker was irrelevant. Frank Maltz, executive producer of the Charlie Burton Show, and practically the only early patron of the hotel breakfast room, was sitting at a table alone. Good morning, Johnny. I left him sitting in almost the same position at 2 o'clock in the morning. Only the table then was in a backstreet cantina in town. He was apparently remembering it, and he avoided my eyes until the waiter had brought my coffee and gone away. I guess I, uh, I made quite a fool of myself last night, huh? Oh, when was that? <laughs> nice of you to ask, Johnny. Mmm, this is good coffee. Mm. Oh, you'd been making the rounds last night, for whatever reasons, and you felt like talking. But I, uh, I wouldn't call that making a fool of yourself. All right. Thanks. You were sober enough when I left you. Oh, sure. You just sat there and let me talk it out. Where'd you go, anyway? I came out of the cantina a few minutes later, you disappeared. Captain Peral, Ensenada Police, picked me up in a prowl car. He'd located that maid from the hotel here. We went to her home and talked to her. So? Well, for the moment at least, you and Al and Gloria Dale are apparently off the hook. Oh? The maid says Burton was always annoying her whenever she was on duty here. He was. I told him to lay off. Well, her husband found out and came out here to the hotel yesterday evening. I saw him and his wife arguing out there on the terrace just after dusk. But I didn't know what it was all about at that time. Anyway, that's the last she saw him. He didn't come home last night and he's still missing. I just talked to Peral on the phone. They've got half the police force looking for him. Then you figure he's the one who took a shot at Charlie last night. Kind of adds up, doesn't it? Well, I guess so. I hope they find him, Johnny, before he finds Charlie again. I'd hate to see a poor devil take a rap for killing a louse who isn't worth it. Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, the chances are they will. Didn't either one of you fellas ever get to bed last night? Not for long. Good morning, Al. Oh, my goodness, Frank. You look awful, man. You must have slept on your face. I look the same as I look every morning. Want some breakfast, Al? No, thanks. I'm skipping it. I'm going to try to get in a dip in that pool before old blubber tummy oozes out of his feather bed. Oh, I don't think he'll be using the pool this morning. Not if he remembers what we're shooting today. It's that castaway sequence, isn't it? Yeah, we'll get that first. But later this afternoon, if the light on the water is okay, I want to get those shots of him swimming ashore. Good. Keep him on retakes till he gets waterlogged. It's, uh, it's kind of a slapstick desert island thing, Johnny. Oh? Yeah, yeah. You see, Charlie and I are supposed to have been on this yacht, and it sank. And I just disappear. But there's some stock shots of Charlie swimming like crazy in a stock shot of a deserted South Sea island. And finally, Charlie comes crawling up onto the beach. That's the sequence we're going to shoot this morning. I see. He's pooped. He's dying, you know. Then I step out from behind a bush, and I'm wearing a full-dress suit, white tie and tails. 
He thinks he's crazy or something. It starts building from there, then, Johnny. Uh, yeah, I get the idea. He's thirsty, see? So I reach under my coat and bring out a soft drink, an ice-cold bottle. And I open it and give it to him. It says, cut quality beverages on the bottle, C-O-T-T. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so Charlie asks, is it any good? And I say, it's cut, man. And he says, so what? And I say, so it's cut to be good. You see, Johnny, it's, it's out and out slapstick, but it works pretty well on camera. Yeah. yeah, it keeps building, you see. I keep producing things out of the bushes. A table and chair, tablecloth, dishes and silver, caviar, bottle of wine, roast turkey, then a string quartet, and finally a line of dancing girls. And the payoff's a shaggy dog. He says, look, we were shipwrecked together. How you doing all of this? And I say, it's easy. I got a cousin in Congress. It's a lot better on film, Johnny. A lot better than it sounds, you know, stripped down this way. Uh, yeah, well, I'm not exactly a fan of Burton's. Oh, he's got some good stuff in this one, Mr. Dollar. In fact, he's got all the good stuff. Only thing I'm in there for is to feed him the lines. As usual, of course. If I ever get a decent role in his show, I'll drop dead. Oh, really? Attention! That's not funny, Al. At ease. I said it's not funny. You thought it was when you did it on the show last month. May I remind you that your services can be easily dispensed with. Good. Fire me. Al, if I could get out of this lousy contract with you, I could start on the PCT tomorrow. And at five times what you're paying Take me. Take it easy, Al. No, no, by all means. They'll set far. me up in my own show. And they'll put it in a time slot right opposite yours. In three months, Charlie, I could bump you clear off the screen. You don't say so. Al, beat it, will you? Okay, Frank. Sorry you had to get caught in the crossfire, Mr. Dollar. Nothing personal. Forget it. See you later, gentlemen. You'll be on that set in a half hour, not a minute later. Yes, sir. You certainly are one big happy family, aren't you? Dollar, that kid was a nobody when I picked him up. You're wrong, Charlie. That kid is a real talent, and you know it. You see? You see what I have to deal with? He's done as much for this show in the past year as you have. You see, Dollar, I'm forced to live in the very presence of my enemy. Who made them your enemies, Burton? Look... My only concern has always been the welfare of those less fortunate than myself. Those who depend on me for their professional careers and their livelihoods. I understand there's some difference of opinion about that. Well, it's envy. Nothing but envy. Would you like some more coffee, Johnny? No, thanks. I've had about all I can stand. Yeah, so have I. May I ask what you're doing to protect my life, Mr. Dollar, if anything at all? Oh, I've taken the usual routine precautions. Routine? I demand more than routine. Not from me. You don't demand anything. I'm working for the insurance company. Then I'll complain to them. Good, good. Why don't you cancel your policy at the same time? Then I can get off this assignment. Couldn't cancel it if I wanted to. My sponsors wouldn't allow it. It's for their protection, not mine. I know that. I think you'd like to see me murdered. Oh, no. No, you're wrong there. That would mean I'd uh, loused up an assignment and I'd take pride in my work. But you wouldn't care, personally... Uh, no comments. I'll demand protection from the local police. You've already got it. Captain Peral had two men on duty there last night after that shot was fired, watching your room. I didn't see them. They didn't intend for you to see them. Relax, Burton. If the worst does happen, ballistics can probably identify the killer after we get the slug out of your body. Dollar, this is no laughing matter. Then why did you treat it like one? Why did you tear up that threatening letter? Why didn't you call the police in right then? Why didn't you cooperate with me yesterday when I got here? And why the devil did you make a pass at an 18-year-old girl in the first place and get her husband out gunning for you? You mean you know who's trying to kill me? If it's any satisfaction to you, Burton, just in case he gets past us, you probably have been killed by a man named Nacho Morales. His wife is a maid here at the hotel, as you no doubt know. Uh, that, uh, little native girl? Yeah. That little native girl. Oh, now, look, look, both of you. No, I was wrong. I admit it. I just, just lost my head, I guess. When a man's under pressure all this time, as I am, he doesn't always think straight. No, no, I didn't mean any harm toward her. Maybe you'll be able to convince Nacho of that if he waits long enough to listen. No, don't, don't, please. I, I know you hate me. All of you do, but... I'm not as bad as you think. You just don't know the load a star has to carry. Then why don't you tell us about it? You, Frank... You don't think I'm being fair with Al. You think I'm holding him back, not giving him a chance. Well, you're wrong. I'm actually carrying him, teaching him things I've learned over the years. Oh, he knows quite a bit now, Charlie. So you don't believe me? You don't think I know what I'm talking about? Well, let's... All right. All right, I'll show you. 
Al said he was written down in today's sequence. He said that I, I had the great role. You heard him say well, it. Well, yes. Then John, let him but... have it. I'll what? trade with him. You mean that? Yes, I mean it. Let him change any line he wants. To fit his style, he can play it any way he likes. I'll take that role, he says, is so bad, and I'll still come out the star. All right, all right, all right. Charlie will have a go at it. Fine. I'll see you on the set unless somebody manages to kill me first. Good morning, gentlemen. Oh, I never thought I'd live to see the day. Yeah, that shot last night must have really shaken him up. Oh, that kid will make him look sick, Johnny. He doesn't know what he's in for. Well, there's one way to find out. Oh, wait a minute, Johnny. I've been thinking about something you said. Oh? That maid, uh, Morales' wife, does she speak English? No, just Spanish. Well, what about her husband? Same to you, only Spanish. Well, but the note, Johnny, the murder threat Charlie got, that was written in English. Yeah, I know. The South Sea Island set was built on the beach at the far end of the bay. The technicians and the rest of the cast were already there when Maltz and I arrived, and they started shooting 15 minutes later. Gloria Dale wasn't in the sequence, so she slept in at the hotel. Some of Captain Peral's men were on hand, on the lookout for Nacho Morales, but he didn't show. By three in the afternoon, they were nearly finished. They'd shot the last scene once, but Maltz decided on a retake. So Hal sat down again at the fully laid table on the beach, and they started to roll. He poured himself another glass of colored water from the prop wine bottle and began to carve the roast turkey while he exchanged lines with Burton. Then suddenly Al missed a cue, faltered on a line. And Maltz cut the cameras. Al pushed back from the table, stood up slowly, then staggered and fell. I rushed toward him, pushed through the crowd that was gathering, and kneeled down beside him. But he was already dead. Now, here's our star to tell you about the final intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a frantic game of musical chairs with every player desperate. Because the loser in this game gets the electric chair. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Now, would you ask, John? Oh, it is you. Was there some doubt about it? No, but I was phoning Captain Peral. He's out of his office at the moment. What's the matter, Burton? Somebody's shooting at you again? That's not funny, Mr. Dollar. Who's laughing? A man's been murdered, you know. And I think that's anything but a laughing matter. I said, who's laughing? And except for the whims of fate, it might well be me lying dead at this moment. And that's really why you're upset, isn't it, Burton? Because it might have been you. You're not really concerned about Al's death. I was extremely fond of the boy. You were no fonder of him than he was of you, so save that good old lovable Charlie business for your television audience. I never did buy it myself. Dollar, may I remind you that your position... I know my position in it. I'm an incident to protect your life because some company was crazy enough to write a half-million-dollar policy on you. All right, you're still alive, aren't you? Goodbye, Burton. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location in Sonata, Mexico, to the Home Office, Union States Casualty Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the laughing matter. Expense account, final page. Item 12, 50 cents, two bottles of beer, one for myself and one for Capitan Peral. We sat in his office in the Comandancia de Police and drank them slowly and watched the sun sink behind the headlands across the bay. And we waited. The daytime heat reluctantly loosened its grip, and the town, pushing off the lethargy of afternoon, stirred to the quickened pace of evening. A sprinkling truck passed slowly, sweeping the dusty, rutted street with a spurting broom of water. Gleeful kids ran out behind it and splashed in the puddles, squealing happily. Spanish squeals they were. The commandant sees off the tourist beat, and all the while, somewhere back inside the building, an autopsy surgeon worked on a corpse. Bueno, senor. Ya está listo. The medico is all finished now. Well, what's the verdict, bro? It's what we are thinking. El se mató por veneno. 
He was, um, how you say, uh, poison. What kind of poison? And this uh, uh, cyanura. How you call it? Cyanide? Uh, si, senor, cyanide. And he are, say, also are very much cyanide in this bottle which you has given to me. Yeah, yeah, I thought it smelled like it. Al drank a glass and a half out of it and then dropped dead right in front of the camera. And you are saying the wrong man has drunk it, the, the wrong one is get killed, no? That's right. Charlie Burton was supposed to play that role himself. But this morning at breakfast, he agreed to let Al have the part. I was there, I heard it. So if he was not do that, uh, he is one who will be dead now. Sure, Charlie Burton himself. And it figures, Peral. He's been the target all along. That threatening note that was slipped under his door, somebody firing a shot at him last night. See, si, seguro. Then when they finally got their punch in, they tagged the wrong guy. I don't understand what has happened to this Nacho Morales. Hmm, Marlena's husband, the maid at the hotel that Charlie kept annoying. It's another, I know, it's one big place. It's very small this town. And we are look every place, senor, but we are no find this man. I don't know, Peral. And yet I got a hunch he's the key to this whole thing. We find him, senor. It's no way for us. Get this down. We find him muy pronto now. You bet your life. Item 13, forty. Taxi back to the hotel. Lights were coming on. A cool breeze was starting to blow in off the Pacific. And the whole town was brightening up to the challenge of the night. But not me. Technically, of course, the job I'd been sent here to do was still under control. Big-time comedian Charlie Burton, a great big lovable scream to his public, had been insured by his television sponsor for a half million bucks. Then Burton had received the anonymous note threatening his life. So I was here to protect the insurance company's investments. I didn't care personally what happened to Burton. It was just a job. But I did care about Al. Johnny. Hmm. Oh, hello, Gloria. What is it, Johnny? What happened? No one seems to know anything definite about it. Al Shriver's dead. Poisoned. That's all I know about it. Come on in the lounge. I'll buy you a drink. All right, Johnny. Have they found that man who was missing? What's his name? Nacho Morales. No, he's still missing. This table all right? Sure, anywhere. Waiter. Two margaritas, please. Frank Maltz said something about Charlie and Al changing parts. Yeah. Maltz got Charlie mad, and he made the switch to prove a point. What point? That Al wasn't ready for a starring role. Oh, that's right. You didn't come down for breakfast this morning. No, I wasn't in today's scenes, so I just slept in. It's just as well. It wasn't a very pretty sight. Oh, it's a rotten shame. Al was a real swell guy. Con permiso, senor Al. Oh, here you are. Gracias, senor. Boy, the irony in this world, Johnny. What do you mean? Charlie Burton, who's been a rat all his life, makes his usual crude play for the maid here in the hotel. And what happens? Her husband hits back at the wrong man. Al gets killed. A kid who'd never harm anybody in his life, and Charlie gets off scot-free. I was with Captain Peral last night when he talked to the Morales girl, not his wife. She doesn't speak any English, Gloria, and she says her husband doesn't either. Well, he wouldn't need to, would he, to pull a trigger or poison a bottle of Maybe wine? not, but he would in order to write a threatening note in English. Oh, yeah, I'd forgotten about that. If Nacho's in it, he's not in it alone. And I've got a hunch he's... Uh, the telephone, senor. Oh, thanks. Johnny Dollar. This is uh, Capitan Parral, senor. What is it, Parral? We have just found his man, Nacho Morales. Good. I'll be right down. But, Johnny, do you think Frank Maltz might have... Not if he was after Charlie Burton. He knew that Al, not Burton, was going to drink out of that bottle. But didn't everybody know that? No. Not everybody, Gloria. You didn't. Nacho Morales was sitting alone in the starkly barren detention room of the Comandancia. He was a small man, maybe a few years older than his wife. A field worker with gnarled hands and a bent back. He was waiting patiently, quietly, gripping the brim of his sombrero in his hands, trying to hide the fear, the terror that lay just behind his eyes. His eyes flickered slightly as Peral and I opened the steel grill door. And then he went... Buenos dias, hombre. Buenos dias, Capitan. Tu eres Nacho Morales, es verdad? Sí, señor. ¿Y eres tu esposa de Evelina Morales? Sí, señor. ¿Cómo pasó la noche, hombre? Pues, uh, regular, Locked off señor. by the barrier of language, regular. I watched while Peral questioned him, stopping now and then to translate. Then Peral asked the question that started yeah. the avalanche. Es la pura verdad, señor. Dígame una cosa. 
¿Por qué tú trataste de matar al señor anoche? Why did you try to kill that man last night? No, Capitán, es mentira decirlo. Yo no traté de matar a nadie. No es cierto. In answer to Peral's accusation, Puede Nacho's ser. story poured out in a flood of Spanish. And as I stood there listening to it translated, I began to feel sick inside. I'd been blind. All the facts were there, all the evidence. And I'd still failed to spot the play. Nacho's story was the key. It fit. And I knew he was telling the truth. He'd been hiding out on a friend's fishing boat since the night before. He knew he'd be accused. Because he had been at the hotel when the shot was fired through Burton's window. He was hiding in the shrubbery by the terrace. And he'd seen the whole thing. The shot had been fired by Charlie Burton himself. Who is it? Johnny Dollar. I want to talk to you, Burton. All right. Just a minute. What is it, Dollar? Have they caught that killer yet? Not sure Morales, you mean? Yeah. Peral picked him up about an hour ago. I just came from there. Has he confessed? No, he hasn't. Well, they ought to beat it out of him. That's the only way to make that kind talk. It is, huh? Sit down, Burton. I think you're due for a shock. What are you talking about? Nacho didn't try to kill you. Well, then who did? Nobody. Are you crazy? What about Al Schreiber? I suppose he's not even dead. Oh, he's dead, all right. You ought to know. You killed him. Uh, that was your whole plan, wasn't it, Burton? To kill Al Schreiber and get away with it. Everything else was a preliminary build-up. Oh, that's very funny. You ought to be on television. Well, there's going to be an opening soon. You wrote that threatening letter yourself. What? And then tore it up after Maltz had seen it so it couldn't be traced back to you. You get better all the time. You fired that shot through your window from the terrace there. More build-up. Then you made your play, that phony argument this oh, morning. Oh, really? Switching Dollar. parts with Al, putting him on the spot, making it look as though somebody had tried to poison you and missed. It was fairly clever, Burton, but you're still going to be tagged for it. Does Peral know all this? Why don't you ask him? I'll be glad to step... All right, Dollar. Don't move. Get your hands up now. Real slow. Is that the same gun you used last night? You're wrong, you know. I'm not going to be tagged. Relax, Burton. There's no capital punishment in Mexico. You can star in all the prison shows. You're too smart, Dollar. You're like Al. And you know what happened when he got too smart. You have dropped his gun, senor. Peral. I started to tell you I'd be glad to call him that he was listening out there in the terrace. He's gone. You drop quick. No. Get out, Peral. Mira, senor. I am not shoot too bad, I think. No. No, not bad at all, Perel. Well, he asked for it. I am see he is going to pull his trigger, so I are to shoot much fast. Bam, bam, bam. And tell you, he look very surprised, senor. Yeah. It's too bad he couldn't have seen the look on his face. A comedian would have really appreciated it. Or he'd have died laughing. <laughs> Item 14, $462.30. Hotel and miscellaneous in Ensenada and transportation back to Hartford. Expense account total, $791.55. End of account, end of report. Remarks? Ray Policy on the life of Charles Z. Burton, deceased. Refer Clause 34, subparagraph C, quote... If the insured dies while committing a felony, this policy is null and void. Unquote. The Superior Court of Baja California rules that Burton was shot while resisting arrest and committing an assault with a deadly weapon. So you can keep your half million bucks. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Here's our star to tell you about next week's intriguing story. Next week, a frantic chase across the country after a girl who couldn't possibly exist. Then suddenly turned up. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Your 
Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Virginia Gregg, John Daner, Lucille Meredith, Lawrence Dobkin, Gil Stratton, Harry Bartell, and Don Diamond. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino and Carl Fortina. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>